Hello and welcome to The Gaming Historian. In 1992, a game known as Little Samson was released for the NES and went virtually unknown. And it's a shame too. This game is, without a doubt, the definition of a hidden gem. Today, it is one of the most sought after video games for the original Nintendo. But what is really so fascinating about this game is why it went unknown. Our story begins with Capcom. Well, to be more specific, employees leaving Capcom. Shinichi Yoshimoto, who worked on Ghouls and Ghosts, and Akira Kitamura, who helped create Mega Man, felt they were being held back at Capcom. They sought more creative freedom, and wanted to develop games on multiple platforms. The two left Capcom to form Takaru. Soon after, their friend Koichi Yotsui, the director of the arcade game Strider, joined them. So far so good, right? It was like having a Capcom all-star team. Now, Takaru was a small company, but they were determined to make great games and realize their dreams. Their first success came with Kokoran, a really interesting platformer released for the Famicom in 1991. The game was directed by Akira Kitamura, and it definitely shows. This game is very similar to Mega Man in gameplay style. It's a strange game, but then again it does take place in a dream world. Takaru's next game would be ambitious. Koichi Yotsui directed a text-based adventure game known as Nostalgia 1907. The game tells the story of a cruise ship known as the Nostalgia being held hostage by a man looking for a treasure on board. The game was notable for its bomb diffusion scenes and was an inspiration to Hideo Kojima when he made Police Knots. Nostalgia 1907 was only released in Japan for the Sharp X68000 and the Mega CD. Unfortunately, the game did not sell well and put Takeru in a financial crisis. Feeling partially responsible, Yotsui left the company. Meanwhile, another game company was having their own issues. Taito was made famous due to Space Invaders back in the late 70s, but they wanted a strong brand slash mascot for the home console. Mario was of course on top of the world at this time, so Taito wanted to cash in on the mascot craze. This is when Takeru and Taito joined up to create one of the best games on the NES. Now, before we get into this game, I do want to clear a few things up. This game is known as Lickel, Legend of the Holy Bell in Japan. When Taito brought it over to the United States, he changed the name to Little Samson. Now, some people seem to think that this game is based off the story of Samson from the Bible, when in reality, they have nothing in common. It's interesting that Taito chose to change the name of this game because I feel it hurt the game overall but more on that later. The game was designed by Shinichi Yoshimoto, and artwork was done by Utata Kiyoshi, who is a well-respected artist in the gaming community. He worked on both Kokoran and Nostalgia 1907. Most notable was his artwork for Metal Storm, another hidden gem on the NES. Yeah! Little Samson is unique in that there is no text or dialogue in the game. Instead, the game uses a series of cutscenes to set up the story. To sum it up, a dark prince has escaped captivity and threatens the land. After his own soldiers are wiped out easily, the king requests help from four heroes to stop the evil prince and save the kingdom. It's a nice backdrop to your adventure, but it's not crucial. In Little Samson, you control these four heroes throughout the game and can switch between them at any time. First, there's Little Samson. I'd say he's the most well-rounded character. He jumps high, he can climb on walls and ceilings, and he has about average health. Next is Kikira the Dragon. Kikira can hover for several seconds, she won't slip on ice, and she can charge up her shot. Gam the Golem is slow, but has a very powerful attack, large health, and can walk on spikes. And finally, there's K.O. the Mouse, who has small health, but can climb just like Little Samson, as well as drop powerful bombs. Each hero owns a legendary bell that will help save the kingdom. 
Samson even throws bells as his weapon. This would help explain the Japanese title of the game. In fact, when your character dies, their bell explodes. Ouch. Each character is important throughout the game, and you'll find yourself using all of them at certain times. It's interesting what kinds of strategies a player can use in different situations. Sometimes you'll find yourself grabbing an item above spikes with little Samson, then in mid-air switch over to Gollum. Gameplay is one of the game's strong points. It's a platformer, and a really good one at that. There's plenty of jumping, climbing, shooting, punching, and flying. Levels aren't memorable, but are fun to navigate through. The controls are extremely tight and responsive, and makes the challenge more about skill than bad design or control. The graphics are some of the best on the system. Just take a look at some of this footage. The detail is incredible, especially on the boss fights. This game was released late in the NES life, so during this time hardware limits were being pushed. Even small things like the way Samson jumps is animated very well. Probably the weakest part of the game is the sound. There's no stage music, just the themes for each of your characters. As you switch characters, their theme music will play. It can get pretty repetitive. One bright spot in the sound department are the sound effects, particularly when you hit an enemy. It makes this clunk sound, which is just so satisfying. Fighting a boss and hearing that sound is just great and lets you know you're actually damaging him. The game uses a password system to keep track of a player's progress. However, the game won't save your power-ups with these passwords. You see, throughout the game, each character can upgrade his health or stock a potion to replenish his health. When you start the game up and enter a password, however, your upgrades are gone. The game makes up for this by letting the player go through an easy level full of power-ups before getting to the actual stage. It's not the best way to keep track of the game state, but at least the passwords are short, only four characters. To sum it up, Little Samson is a fun, innovative game for the original Nintendo. It's on my personal top 10 NES games list, and it has stood the test of time. So why did this game completely flop? Sales were extremely low, and many people aren't even aware this game exists. Well, problem number one was Taito released Little Samson at the end of the system's life. Super Nintendo was new and exciting. The Genesis was hitting its stride, and many gamers had moved on. Second of all, there was little to no advertising or press for this game. In fact, the only memorable write-up there is, is in issue 40 of Nintendo Power, which had a small walkthrough. But even that didn't cover the whole game. Problem number three, and this is a theory, is that naming the game Little Samson probably turned a few gamers off from purchasing it. The majority of gamers mm, stay away from religious games. It's possible many thought Little Samson was a religious game, just based on the title. Little Samson was Takeru's last hope at a successful game, and it came up short. It would officially be the company's last title, most of Takeru's staff joined another video game company known as Mitchell. Today, it's one of the rarest games on the NES. According to video game price charts, the cart alone is worth about $205. Oddly enough, Taito has published a few other hard-to-find games, including Panic Restaurant and The Flintstones, Surprise at Dinosaur Peak. If you're able to find a copy of Little Samson, congratulations! You have one of the rarest, and best, games on the Nintendo Entertainment System. Thanks for watching.